Welcome to episode two of our tire side chat series. You guys had so many insightful comments about our GT350R versus GT350 comparison that it actually inspired me to bring you guys in on another debate that Adam and I have been having for about two years now, ever since Adam just kissed the wall with his Boss 302 at Road Atlanta. I think that stability control caused the crash. We're gonna talk through all of the different things that we know about stability control and then the stuff that Adam and I disagree on. And then I'm really curious to hear your guys' input or experiences that you've had with the systems. So I've got a confession to make. Uh, all of your comments on our video the other day about the GT350, GT350R actually made me realize that I've been kind of holding a grudge against the GT350R. And that's because when Adam announced that he was bringing a GT350 to our track test, I tried to go out and buy a GT350R. There was only one within 300 miles that I could realistically acquire in the four days that I had. I called up the dealership. They would not budge on their price. They wanted $97,000 for the car, which is like 30 grand over the sticker price. And <laughs> even if I could have stomached it, I couldn't have swung it. And so I've been kind of holding a grudge against the car ever since then because of a greedy dealership. The first thing that Adam and I agree on is this. The C5Z06 is how traction control, stability control should work. One button push and it's just you and the car. No convoluted modes, you don't have to come to a stop. You can just one button push and it's you and the car. That's the way it should be. So my first track day experience way back in 2009 was in Italy and I had this instructor who didn't speak a lick of English and I don't speak a lick of Italian. So we spent about four hours driving around in a 458 Italia with him screaming at me, up your eyes, up your eyes. And I was like, what the fuck does up your eyes mean? Now, what he was trying to tell me was the car goes where your eyes go. And that's the problem with traction control. It doesn't know where you want the car to go. So when traction control straightens the car, oftentimes what it'll do is you're in a big skid. It doesn't know if you want the car to go that way or that way. It can see your brake input, throttle, wheel speed sensors, steering angle, all that stuff. But it's a guess on what you want to do with the car. First, I want to define the uh, three main terms we're going to be using. This is straight out of the Ford owner's manual. You've got traction control, which Ford uses to control wheel slip at the back. So that only really applies to when you're on the throttle, right? And then you've got stability control. Stability control uses the ABS to control the angle of the car. So if it thinks that the car is going in the direction you don't want it to go, it's gonna use the brakes to turn the car back in that direction. And then finally, you've got advanced track. Advanced track is Ford's umbrella term for those two systems working together. So before we talk about this, we gotta define the different modes that Ford's got for their traction, stability control, advanced track. So they've got the default startup. That's where everything is on the full umbrella. You can push the button once, that turns off track control. If you double tap the button while holding the brake, that turns on sport mode, which really is pretty useless unless the car is bone stock. And then if you come to a full stop, hold the brake down and press the button for five seconds, that theoretically turns everything off. The full umbrella is gone. Traction and stability control are off. As far as the functionality on the Mustangs, Adam and I agree on this. You can be in the fully off mode and the systems can turn themselves fully back on. So advanced track, the umbrella system, everything will come back on. Adam has experienced this when he tried putting different sized tires on the four corners of the car. Advanced track saw wheel speeds that it couldn't make sense of. And so it just turned advanced track completely on, stability and traction control. I had the same experience with my mom's 2012 Mustang V6. Um, in the middle of winter, I took it to a parking lot and I got the car up. This is with all the systems off. I got the car up to about 45, 55 miles an hour, and I did a little Scandinavian flick. I got the car rotating. I stayed on the throttle, and the car spun. I let off the throttle, and the brakes tried to straighten the car. And then I stood on the brake pedal, as someone would in like a panic situation, when the car was spinning, and it immediately turned everything back on, the full umbrella of traction and stability control. And I've had the same experience with my Mustang GT. So we agree that all three cars have the ability to turn advanced track fully back on. Now, what does that mean? That means the nannies are always watching and that's important for later. I love that Ford has got warnings, cautions, and notes just like the UH60-10. I don't know why that's so cool to me. So the very first warning about traction control, stability control, advanced track is that vehicle modifications involving the braking system, aftermarket roof racks, 
Suspension, steering, tire construction, and or wheel tire size may change the handling characteristics of the vehicle and may adversely affect the performance of the advanced track system. And then it talks about some stereo stuff and then it ends with, this may result in vehicle rollover, personal injury, and death. So Ford won't admit that stability control can still come on when it's in the quote unquote fully off mode. So we don't know what the parameters are. What I do know is this, it's speed related. The car doesn't care. If you're doing donuts in a parking lot, you'll never see the light come on. So you've got to be going a certain set speed for it to arm itself or whatever. And then it has to do with slip angle. Now, if you're in the throttle, doesn't care what the slip angle is, it'll let you spin the car and it'll never do anything. But if you're close to the lock stop, so within a certain degree of the lock stop, then you lift off the gas, it'll start to grab those front brakes to straighten the car and create an opposite yaw moment. Let's check out a video where traction control actually saves my ass at an autocross course. And this is when I was trying to demonstrate it coming on for Adam. And as I'm coming around, I was like, all right, I'm gonna spin. And then as I throw in some opposite lock, I feel the car pulsing that ABS and starting to pull the car back. Now it's very faint. Um, I had this happen numerous times where I didn't understand what was going on. I just thought that the car was really vicious at high slip angles, which was weird because it's of the three cars that I track, it's far and away the friendliest at small slip angles. But then when you get close to the lock stops, the thing turns into just a vicious monster. And what it was, was traction control coming on, or rather stability control coming on, and I didn't realize it. All right, so that was an example of when traction control saved me. Here is an example of when traction control overcorrected. And what you'll see is I get into a nice controllable slide, I lift off the throttle, traction controls, oops, he lost it. And it grabs that front brake, and I've got a little bit stickier tires on the car, so when it grabs that front brake, it created more opposite yaw than it meant to. So you see me have to rip the steering wheel back the opposite direction to try and catch it. And it was a perfectly controllable slide that stability control made way more exciting than it needed to be. I got to experience that warning that Ford throws into their operator's manual firsthand. Adam tossed me the keys to his Boss 302 at the Corvette Museum. Now his car is heavily modified. He has changed the understeer balance of the car to severe oversteer. That thing would give you the apex no matter what. And it was just a question of, you know, is the rear end gonna come with you or is it just gonna spin on you? And he also modified the wheels and tires. So he put massive 305 Pirelli slicks on the car on different offset wheels. Because I had been driving the Firebird all day, I forgot that in the Mustangs, you have to turn everything off before you start rolling. Once you're on track, you're stuck with two choices. You can either turn off traction control, which doesn't do you any good, or you can put the car in sport mode. But there's nothing you can do about the stability control once you're rolling. So I've got the car in sport mode, and I'm coming into the sinkhole. Unfortunately, I don't have video of this, so you're just gonna have to imagine. I'm coming into the sinkhole where the road falls away from you. So the car immediately starts to push. Now when the stability control system sees that push, it doesn't know where I want to put the car. So it thinks, oh, he's headed towards something that he doesn't want to hit. And so it grabbed the right rear wheel to pull the nose down into the corner. Now with the normal understeer balance, that's fine. The car can lean on that understeer balance and create a little bit of oversteer and then it releases the brake, the car goes back to pushing, everything's fine. Adam's car though is set up so loose that when it grabbed that rear brake, rather than pulling the nose down, it caused the rear end to slide. So almost all the way to the lock stop this direction because it locked up that right rear wheel. Well, of course, stability control sees that. So then it locks up the left front wheel and none of the algorithms in the system work because the car's got 305 slicks on it. So every correction that it makes is a massive overcorrection. And I was essentially a passenger for about 10 seconds as the car just did tank slapper to tank slapper. And I got out of that thing and I threw the keys at Adam. I have never driven a car that I felt like was just trying to kill me in my entire life. Just the worst on-track experience I have ever had. So we know that a car modified like Adam's is an absolute dangerous mess when the systems come on. And this is where we disagree. Adam thinks that the Boss 302 is unique from all other Mustangs and that when the systems are fully off in that, they're fully off. My argument is, is that they're not. It's still doing that same thing that my car does when you get into a big skid and you let off. It's still trying to fix that big skid with the front brakes. 
Anybody who watches our two channels knows that I'm a little bit more prone to overdrive my cars than Adam is. <laughs> So the fact that it took me years to realize what was going on and on track, I always thought it was my imagination. It was in the snow and ice where I realized what was really going on in super low grip conditions. And then I went out and I did a test at an autocross course where I ran four laps with the car in the fully off mode and it did its usual thing where it was super friendly at low slip angles and then at big slip angles, I was like, man, this thing is just so vicious. And then I pulled the fuse. And lo and behold, it turned into the Firebird and the Corvette, which is to say the car just felt dead honest all the way up to the lock stops and even spinning the car. So I know for a fact that this car, if you pull the fuse, it changes the way that it handles. And so it's not fully off. So here's what happened to Adam at Road Atlanta. He was in that right-hand turn back just before the long straight, and he was trying to drift the car and he got close to the lock stops he lifted off the throttle and the car violently reversed and just nothing he could do about it and then it kissed the wall with the back end. He says that it wasn't the systems kicking in. My argument is this, with my Mustang GT, when I went from a 235 all season to a 235 summer tire, the car's overshoots got significantly worse because when you get to that full lock stop and it grabs that outside front tire, Rather than helping you, it was actually creating too much yaw moment because of just a slightly stickier but same size tire. Adam went from a relatively not sticky 255P0 summer tire to the stickiest tire that you can buy and in a 305 width, right? And he's got racing brake pads. Now think back to that warning about modifying your systems. You can't modify your systems more than that. He completely changed the balance of the car and then he upped the coefficient of grip at the front end by probably a factor of two. Now you've got the stability control doesn't know where Adam wants to put the car. It just knows that he's in a skid and he doesn't want to be in a skid anymore. So what does it do? Just for a split second, it applies that left front brake. And the Ford system is really crude. It's not nearly as fancy as something like those Porsche GT cars that we drove or like the top end stuff like McLaren's brake steer where it gently applies it. The Ford system just locks up that wheel. Well, it thinks it's locking up a 255 summer tire with relatively low grip, and it's locking up a 305 slick. So it creates a massive opposite yaw moment, and that's why he wasn't able to catch the car. That's my argument. So, and I, I understand where Adam is coming from because we posted this stuff to a couple of different forums, and the responses broke down into two basic categories, which is first, people saying, oh, you're not holding the button for long enough. It's seven seconds instead of five seconds or something to that effect. And then the second response was people posting videos of cars and coffee events where there were Mustangs inducing mass cows. If there's an irony in this though, it's that of the 60 or so people that engaged with us on different forums, the only person that agreed with me that any Mustang still has systems on when it's in the fully off mode was a Boss 302 owner. Lastly, you'll have to forgive me. Being an instructor pilot has made me a little bit of a lawyer about the way things are written. But I found an old Boss 302 press release from, I think it's 2011, and it lists special mechanical features, a fully defeatable traction control system, and electronic stability control settings. To me, that's sort of a backhanded way of whoever wrote that admitting that stability control is not fully defeatable, which is exactly what I'm trying to argue here. That's my argument, and I am super excited to hear what you guys have to say in the comments. Um, let us know your experiences with traction control. If you think that I'm full of it, that's cool. If you think that we're pole vaulting over mouse turds here, that's cool too. Let us know what you think. And as always, thanks for watching.